There we are, it's I'm Arusha gonna, National yeah, Park. I'm going to turn on my international weapon. We are in Arusha National Park, one of our oldest national parks, small in size, about 545 square kilometers. Started mm -hmm. as an animal ranch during the colonial days in the British, British time. And today, the size expands from few acres to 545 square kilometers. In the park, we, as, we, as we are seeing now, we have lots of animals in one small area because Arusha National Park, by nature, it's a forestry area or a, a park. So the animal needs an area to rest and they cannot rest when they are inside the bush, inside that, that dense forest, since their safety is next to zero. They come mm -hmm. out, then ruminant, they ruminate, until they feel like it's time to go. So between 10 to 3 they are out here and then they'll start heading into the bushes for grazing. And these are all grass eaters, that's why they can stay together. We have how many animals we're seeing here? One type species of animals. Okay, to make it easy we have giraffes, buffaloes, zebras, like if you see down under the trees, we have uh, bushbuck. If you see between the um, What's that? The oh running ones, those are water bucks. Oh, look, 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 look. Oh my You see how they come out of the bushes, run out into the open field where they save trees to the maximum. Um, so, like six different types of animals in a small area water buck, bush buck, grand gazelle, warthogs, the ones that are small, small creatures. And we have zebras, buffaloes. I cannot say where are the elephants. They are not bothered by the densey forest and also we have next to the zebras under the tree a little bit left of that we have a white head uh, uh, bird this African fish eagle but it's in the ground sitting in the ground here in the park we always keep on the track because we cannot go off road since the roads are designed for game drive so when so, you're all together like this wouldn't it entice the, the lion a predator to come because it's just easy food. <laughs> That's what I thought about too. Number is safety. So being together, it's mm -hmm. it maximizes the safety. Mm -hmm. Isolated animals like buffaloes by themselves, zebras by themselves, are in danger to be hunted because it's easier. Uh, mm -hmm. Cats like lion, leopard, and cheetah want single animals moving, moving singles, being alone in the water hole that can be easily hunted because. The focus is very easy. Oh, if they run out. to different directions, oh, they will easily lose the target. Yes? So how many predators are in the park? No, not me. Yeah. Well, commonly two, to lion and leopard. That? We don't have cheetahs here because cheetahs need a huge open plain and we don't have that open plain. So there are lions and leopards. Right? Yes. Lions and leopards. Okay, no cheetahs here? No, no cheetahs here. But lions. Lions we do have. I have seen uh, leopards, I have seen lions but uh, oh, okay. since the the prey the hunting uh, is very easy here that's why you don't really see them hanging moving around mm -hmm. in the parks like Serengeti, Ruaha, uh, Julius Nyerere National Park where they really need to walk long distances to follow the prey then the hot days you can easily see that uh, the giraffe we have here are uh, the Maasai giraffe as you can see out there they are tall ones in terms of height, they are taller than the uh, elephant, but the elephants are bigger than the <laughs> The male giraffe can grow up to 5.5 meters high. Female is between 4.5 to 4.9 meters high. They really need that difference of height that has to be. Otherwise, if it happens a dif uh, I mean, uh, abnormality that they are of the same height, then mating is going to be difficult. So. Then how? Is it possible for them to stray out of the park? Yes, yes they do. And how often does that happen? Very often. That's why we have park rangers outside the park to help the locals push back the animals once they are out of the park. Animals have the right of being or they are protected in the park and out the park. They're protected outside of the park? Yes. What we do as locals, if our, a buffalo or an elephant comes out into the village, is to inform the park authority 
and they will come and drive that animal back into the park. Well, I was more concerned about the lions. <laughs> no, no, it happens. It happens. You can get lions. I, I mentioned before that the village where I grown up, we used to have hyenas during the night outside the park. They come into the village, and if you left your cow or you got your sheep, it can be taken by the predators during the night, not during the daytime. So it's it's their right to be anywhere they want to. Yeah. But sometimes mm -hmm. we try, that's called human manipulation, we try to keep them where they're supposed to be. None of our national parks are fenced. Mm -hmm. We are in the national park and we also have other, another category that is called the conservation area. And we have, um, uh, we have one is national park, second is conservation area, we have wildlife management area and we have uh, private concessions. National park is non-consumptive. We don't do inside the park. There's no hunting. There is no human life like in here. In the conservation area, we have human living in the park. We have we have uh, villages inside the park, but these are under a certain control. They are not allowed to do hunting or farming. They live with animals, but they are not allowed to do any hunting or doing uh, <coughs> farming inside the national uh, conservation area. Wildlife management area is animal corridor that connects two parks or out, outskirts or buffer zone of the park where people are living in there, doing their daily activities. They do everything they want to do, but they give right of animals to cross their areas day and night without disturbing them. That's why it's called wildlife management area. The people, there's a department that is working outside the park with the locals to help these animals still use their areas to migrate from one part of the park to the other part of the park. But also sometimes there is a potential of animals outside the park, like minerals. Those areas are under wildlife management area. If buffaloes come out for leaking salt, then the locals should not make any threat to them to go back into the park since they are the locals who are living in the wildlife management area are benefiting the presence of animals into the area. That means, sorry, that means you to go into those areas you have to pay and that money goes to the community so that the community mm. take animals as a value, not as a threat. That's what the government established, wildlife management areas. Yes? So can you talk a little bit about how this, this type of park management of wildlife has infringed upon the lifestyles of the The Maasai are living in the, uh, not in the national park. They live in a conservation area. That's second category of our protected areas. And uh, <coughs> Maasai being in the national park, it's good symbiotic life because they do help protect animals from poachers, they help to give information if somebody is doing something that is not supposed to be done there. But the Maasai are also benefiting that uh, being in the conservation area because every single client who is visiting a conservation area, like Ngorongoro conservation area, uh, there's amount of money deducted from the pack fees that goes to the Maasai in terms of health, education and infrastructures. Kind of like what they do in America with the Native Americans. I don't really know how it works in America, it's but what <laughs> what they do here is the government has control of what we pay to the government. I mean to the parks, but the park authority should every month take a certain amount of money. It depends on how much is needed to the Maasai, so that Maasai take a conservation area as a help to themselves, and they also help to conserve the animals. So what they do is they build schools where the Maasai kids go for free, 100%. They provide food if there is any drought. They make The government makes sure that the Maasai get what to eat. They build roads so that the Maasai can use. Some of the Maasai do own vehicles so they can use it. They build health centers. They produce 24 hours uh, ambulance in, in, in terms of uh, life uh, evacuation is somebody hit by an elephant or buffalo instead of these Maasai to organize themselves and go out and kill the kill the buffalo or the lion that eat a the cow then uh, the government 
is there to take this person to hospital and help this person to be treated but if it happens that the Maasai cow has been taken by the lion instead of Maasai warriors to go and kill the lion the government refund that Maasai person to get his the value of his cow so it's something very positive Maasai being in the conservation area although we're trying to the government is trying to limit the number because the number of the Maasai will always keep on growing and the size of the area will still be the same. So what they do, voluntarily, they refund the Maasai family if they want to go out of Gorongoro conservation area. They'll be given a new settlement outside the Gorongoro, like far from Gorongoro. They give a transportation for everything that they own to the new uh, settlement. They... Uh, help or they give money to build the new house so they convince the Maasai not by force to leave the Ngorongoro conservation area to somewhere somewhere else that so that we keep the number of the Maasai down not uh, leaving it and the number grows when the number grows too big then we'll end up in trouble because Maasai need uh, land for their cows to graze mm -hmm. The Maasai need where to build, and to build the house they need a lot of trees to be chopped so that they build the house. So by helping uh, conservation authority to take them out, the government has to pay the money. Where the money comes from? The pack fees that we pay. Interesting. Yeah. In Tanzania now we have a system from primary school to secondary school, the education is free. Where the money comes from? From our taxes that we pay but also from mining and also tourism tourism is contributing a lot into our gdp mm. we can proceed mm -hmm. you can keep on asking questions as we're moving oh perfect i'm always happy for you to break down the tourism aspect of it yeah yeah because uh, we're always kind of contributing to the that's economy it. so that's it famous i appreciate y'all coming here my brothers share that uh, our energy makes a difference in the country you know, boost the GDP. Tourism is like a uh, snowball. You have it in on top, it melts to the bottom. Because you land, a few days ago, you landed in Kilimanjaro International Airport. Uh, but once you landed, you pay the uh, visa. That's an income. And then you pay the accommodation, accommodation is an income. You pay drinks at the restaurant, that's an income. You purchase some paintings and you buy, purchase some bracelet. That is the that is the income. Now you come to the park today, you, we have paid the park fees, that is an income. Uh, you fly to Zanzibar, you're paying the uh, flight, that's an income. So it's melting to the bottom. Why to the bottom? Because when you're staying at the hotel, the hotel will go out and buy potatoes, will buy tomatoes, uh, spinach from the very, very local families, eggs for breakfast from the local families that comes to the hotel, to the restaurant, and there you, 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 you. that's how you, you help, or the tourism helps their lives. If it's not you being here, by now I'm at home, not making any income. So being here, I'm also making my income. Yeah? You know that you're paying for me, so it's income. It's always, and that's why I say tourism is a snowball. It comes from yes, the sir. top and it melts that's the bottom. So yeah. Beautiful. Place. As we can see, uh, definitely, um, and we've seen our countries who lost big tourism like Ghana, we've seen how it affects the economy. Yeah, yeah, yeah a just not serious talk, thing. don't talk of Ghana, talk of Tanzania during the corona. You guys lost, oh, you guys we lost. Some because, of oh, the yeah, companies yeah. are shut down right. till today. You lost tourism like that? Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because uh, in 2019, when the corona started, we thought that it would never touch us. And then we keep on doing our lives. And then the February of 2020, there was like overnight cancellation. Yeah. You have like 20 tours in the list and in the morning you wake up, you get a red email because yeah. actually we have a setting, you have the tour, if the booking cancel, it comes in red. Yeah. So you don't really need to open it, you just say it turns red, you say this is dead. So why did they cancel? 
because of the pandemic. Because there was no flight, so they couldn't reach. No, but yes, so COVID never came. Over. No, we had a COVID. Yeah. Okay, because they can't report that Tanzania just didn't have COVID. To be honest, 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 to be my brother, my sister, my father, they are all doctors and they always ask me if I have been vaccinated, why I'm not vaccinated. I have to be vaccinated because the corona cases are every day jumping high. And I say to my brother, ah, you know what? Death is death. If I'm not dying of corona, I can die of car accident. I'm driving car like eight months of the year I'm sitting in the car. Why should I worry of Corona while I'm sitting in the car? So I'm the only person in the family just been vaccinated once. I mean, I mean, I have to be vaccinated as a guide because otherwise they will not let me get into the park. But there were three vaccines, the one and second and the third. I did only the first one to get the certificate. Thereafter I said, no, I'm not doing it. Is that required about, are you considered a government employee? I'm not a government employee, but I'm working in the industry. To be vaccinated, I thought, and I think it was for myself. My my daughter, my son, my wife, they are all vaccinated three times because my son is going to school and he's getting in contact with a lot of others. My wife, she is uh, self-employed. She goes into the uh, local market very often. But to me, I said, I will die anyway, so. So, did, so uh, when did they do the mandate? I didn't think there was a vaccine mandate in Tanzania. Was there? Well, there was. There was. Yeah, there was. Yeah, there was. There was. Yeah, 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 there was. Yeah,
you are wrong, you are doing, but then few few months later, maybe like nine months later, the scientist declared that this is we were gonna live with it. Yeah, because the time period. So like maybe gone, maybe so. he was the first scientist to say. Yeah. And, and he is the only person tested all creatures. He tested cows, he tested tested goats, sheep, and they are all. Some of them are fine with corona, and some of them not. Did he die from corona? That's what they say. That's what they say. But I, but I don't believe because all the people that are working with him, they are survive. They survive. Mysterious. One of those mysterious situations. That's, yeah, we don't really know what, what caused it. Yeah. But uh, may, may, uh, may he rest in peace and power. He's a very great visionary. I know. And, and then that's how people have sort of got here because oh, yeah. Because this was Tanzania was never on our schedule. But, but you know, I so, think the, 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 the doctors say that he had a heart failure because he was living with a machine. So something, something should cause. But to say Corona, I don't believe. Yeah, I wouldn't say. But uh, we appreciate his leadership because that's how that's how I got interested in Tanzania. I didn't. It wasn't. On our radar, okay. it was in South Africa. That's good. <laughs> so, and then now since I've been here, I've loved it. To, you know, to where we keep coming back, so family. You know? And this is our group family. We are 15 strong. Oh, it is a beautiful day here at this incredible national park. We're rolling on a dirt road, and nature is everywhere. And we got Mr. Bomani Dakari here, he's always excited. You're looking for your color, color bus monkey? Well, don't put your hands too close to the window.